Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I today have the pleasure of speaking with Michelle Fabrega, our love and relationship coach. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Arne. Hi, John. Hey, Michelle. Great to see you. Uh, you know, a lot of folks uh, our age, that's uh, over 50, well over 50 in the case of Art and myself, <laughs> um, you know, things, it, it, as you get older, life has a lot of the same ups and downs. They're not the same. They're mm -hmm. sometimes more difficult ups and downs. And I've noticed recently uh, some acquaintances who, uh, now they just happen to be women, but they they are have they're going through a real tough time and you know i don't mean to seem cruel but they do seem to be wallowing in mm. um i can't call it self-pity because it's it's you know things it's real problems but they are wallowing in their discontent mm. and and um you know they have these longings for for, for what might be or could be or would have been or should would have should have could have you know we all have gone through that right but in terms of, again i know it's kind of cool to do i can't just say quit your wallowing you know buck up uh, but <laughs> but it is a problem for people and it's a it's a very human problem i think we've all gone through it it, it seems to me i don't know why but it just, just recently it seems to be affecting older people more than i've noticed mm -hmm past but the, the idea of being discontented of having problems what do you what do you do about that how do you get somebody out of that funk of longing for it to be different or better or the way it was or yeah 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 i mean we've all been you know myself included have been caught in that sometimes and i think um yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this because I, I think that this is something that, that's relatively new to my awareness from a coaching mentor of mine, kind of using longing and discontent as like uh, an entry point into making some changes. Because I think, um, you know, a lot, many of us were raised with like, we're always supposed to be, you know, try to be happy and be grateful for what we have and appreciate what we have. And, um, and this is a good thing, right? But it also can venture into don't be greedy or want too much or something, right? And maybe we were, you know, told we were spoiled or, you know, that if we want more, it makes us a bad person. Or, or even if we get too much great, good things happening, then we're going to tempt fate and, you know, bad things are going to happen or whatever. But, yeah. but what I've been learning is that these can be seeds to possibility, right? And if we take some time to like, you know, take the honest, sober look at them, we can discover some things like what are our true longings and bring them more into our lives or what are we really unhappy about and how could we um, make a difference in that way? So for instance, like obviously love and relationships, right? And my favorite, favorite topic. So I like to ask clients, you know, what would you love? How would you want to feel about your love life? Right? What do you want to experience? If you're in a partnership, you know, what do you want your relationship to be like? Or even, you know, what do you want your relationships with your children to be like? And so, you know, often there's some discontents there too, right? We, you know, um, and it's easy to, like you said, wallow or get into the complaining mindset. But if you don't hang out there too long, you can say, God, I wish I felt more connected to my kids. Yeah. Or, um, you know, my, my husband and I have the same argument about he buys too much and, you know, and I get upset or even like petty things that happen. But what I'm saying is that, take a look. And um, usually the discontent, there's always almost often a flip side because like there's a quote out there, right? A complaint is just a want in disguise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want to repair my relationship with my daughter. I want to feel closer to her. Oh, look at that. And even just in saying that we can feel more alive. And even imagine saying that to our daughter who we haven't spoken to in five years or, or whatever, just saying that out loud to her, what could that build, right? And the reason the exercise is valuable is because we're shining the light and bringing something out of the shadows. Because if we just like, you know, usually these thoughts about complaining or um, 
discontent. They just kind of hover around and we kind of like brush them aside and let's get on to feeling more positive. But we actually, what I'm saying is that you take a time to actually look at them and it sometimes a little yucky, right? It takes, it takes courage to look. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying examine, uh, uh, be smart enough to examine your, what you're discontented about. Um, and take a look at your longings and instead of, you know, getting stuck in a spiral of just more and more and more of it, ask yourself, what can I do to change it? What, what would I want it to be instead? And, and how do I get there? Right. I mean, it's, it's an invitation to change. Exactly, exactly. And so what's cool about it is that when you actually look at it, I mean, I'm talking about you literally like write them down, you know, like make a list for yourself. You know, what are you longing for in your life and, you know, love and relationship or any arena of your life? And what are you discontented about? And see what is, and then like usually something will come to you that you could make a change, some small action that you could make a difference. Like, you know, like I said about that, you know, fighting about spending money. It's like, well, let, I, I don't like when you spend too much and I don't like when you complain about me spending too much. Too much is your opinion of it. Not, so like, let's actually come, can we resolve that in some way? Can we actually attend to it? So it's not a chronic thing we always are snagging on in our relationship, right? Yeah. And um, to, to actually, you know, it, it can be a little gutsy, right? If you're gonna make your list and you're gonna share with your partner, but we've talked about this before, builds intimacy and you're not building it to complain you're not sharing your list to complain about them you're sharing what you want together right and um and that it's like um you know you get the ball rolling you get you share your intention with what you want and um i I find find kind of interesting that um you seem to be uh talking uh, as i believe that it is that discontent and longings are the flip sides of the same coin and uh it just seems to me from this conversation uh, that we're having here that, uh, and I think what I've often found, although I'm an eternal optimist and th- things are pretty great, even though, you know, there are shit storms all around me, like everybody else, uh, I seem to find the best in things. It seems to me that for a lot of people, if there's a discontent that you ought to examine that and say, is it really bad? Okay. Or, you know, because if, if I'm making up some of the stuff and it's really not that bad, I've got a nice house and yeah, so we're arguing about money, but we don't really have money problems, do we? Uh, so, what, you know, I, maybe if I change my mindset, I won't be longing stuff because I got it pretty good. Now, granted, there are cases where, uh, you know, uh, I have a longing to go to medical school. You know, I don't care what age somebody is. Uh, and, you know, that I have to keep giving it up because I'm taking care of the kids' tuition or something like that. Well, that may be a, a, a real thing. But if you look at it in, you know, a different framework of what am I really unhappy about, maybe that's the key as opposed to uh, trying to, to fight both sides of the coin at the same time. Yeah, anyway. I, Art, I think you make a good point, and that is that longings and discontent are almost by definition negative. And what we need to do is take a, flip them over and take a look at the positives of each of our longings, each of our, the things that are making us discontented and, and find the positive, find, the, find ways to deal with it and change it. Okay, so, so Michelle, any last um, uh, hints yeah, on how we can, how we can get out of the non- like, I wanna feel closer to my partner. Hmm. So we want to get out of this. Non, we want to we want to create a non wallow zone, according to John. Uh, <laughs> so the best way to do that is how. Well, like I said, take some inventory, look at your list of things, write your list of things that you're discontented about, and then flip them over in your mind. Often like, well, what do you want instead? And then think about what is one step you can take today in this moment to make a difference toward that and revisit this and see over time, as you just pay attention, you're going to notice like, Oh, you know, I wish I didn't, you know, I wish I was slimmer or whatever. And it's just like, Oh, well, what could, I could go for a walk today. You know, that would make, I would feel better about that. Or, you know, I wish when I saw my former husband, I didn't like have to go in the other room. Well, what would be different here? Well, I wish I could be in the same room with him. 
Well, maybe I want to tell him next time I see him, you know what? I would love to be able to be in the room with you and just feel more at peace that here we are, we have these kids together. How can we make this way better? It's like, it's about scattering seeds and nurturing them. That's a good point. I like that. Okay, well, thank you, Michelle. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.